Yes, so I'm going to talk to you about lighting today. Um, a lot of people here are talking about the environment inside the building and to have a good environment or a clean environment. And to have a good environment or an efficient environment, lighting is one important part of it. So I'm talking about human-centric lighting. Um, just a little bit about myself. I'm the head of the R&D department for lighting at Easylux, a German company, and I teach at a German university. What will we do? We'll do a quick introduction. Um, then what is a smart lighting system? A lot of people are talking about smart lighting. Um, what is bioactive light? What is this real human-centric lighting? I'll explain that a little. And, then, and that's the major question, actually. What are the real measurable results for human-centric lighting? Then, where is human-centric lighting? Do you know any products about human-centric lighting? And a quick summary in the end. But just to give you a brief introduction about Azilux, we are actually a 40 years old company founded in 1970. We have roughly 400 employees, um, 17 branches worldwide, uh, US, Asia, some branches also. And our slogan is performance for simplicity. Simplicity or sim to be simple is very, very important because we want to have our products as easy or as simple as possible for the user, but also for the installer. Um, and yes, our R&D department, everything is made in Germany. Our production sites are in Germany. That's very important for us. And we got big, actually, with presence and motion detectors in the past decades. And a couple of years ago, we built a new whole branch inside our company, which is the lighting department now. So we have now very efficient lighting technology. Just to give you a brief introduction about Easylux. Well, that's so far about the company. I'm not talking so much about the company. I'm not a sales guy, actually, a technician. Um, so what? really is smart lighting. I've been at the lighting building last week for a full week, and a lot of people talking about, this is smart light, and this is smart light. And in the end, it was like a smartphone app. So you were able to connect or to control your light with your smartphone. This is not real smart. This is not smart lighting. What we say is it's to regulate and not just to control. If you just connect your Bluetooth phone or your phone with the lighting, uh, then it's not smart. It needs, a, it needs to be a system where all environmental variables are taken into account. Only if those variables are taken into account, for example, here you have a lot of ventilation systems and does the window open automatically or not, then it gets smarter. If you just are able to open the window with your phone, that's not smart. So the various uh, environmental vari <laughs> variables needs to be into a taken into account from the sensors. And the one good thing then is that if that happens automatically, then the user has a lot more comfort because he doesn't have to open the window, for example. If you just look into a classroom, for example, um, and calculate through how many times you need to open the window to have fresh air. Nobody is doing that. It's just so many times. If that happens automatically, people are doing that. So you have more fresh air. That's the automatic smart system uh, that I want to talk about. So that increases the comfort, but sometimes the user doesn't want that. It doesn't want to have this automatic thing. It wants to control something. Perhaps he wants to open the window now, or he doesn't want to open the window. So when I talk about smart lighting systems, or when I talk about smart systems, it needs to be as easy as possible, automatic regulation system, but still the user needs to be able to control it so that he, the will of the user is still in the middle. So that would then increase the comfort and also the efficiency if you're looking about the windows that I was just talking, uh, talking to you about. And I have a good example. It's actually that Google Now. All of you have smartphones, Android phones, and I think Siri is doing the same thing with the iPhone. In the morning, Google Now is telling you now, please go that way. Take that route to your work. Because you took the same route like the last four days. Now Google Now realizes that and gives you a better route or the same route in something, just because it knows what you did the last time. That's this variables that I was talking uh, about. Um, but you can still decide if you want to take that route or not. So Google now is a smart system. That's a very good example for a smart system. But I want to talk about smart lighting systems. So a smart lighting system should 
give you regarding to each task what really is important, what kind of lighting environments you, you need to have. So if you have different tasks, you need different kinds of light, and that should happen automatically as well. And if you have this smart lighting system, then you can save costs also on the other side. Let's say you, just, you have a normal sensor, a daylight sensor, that detects just how much light you have now inside the room. The folks before me only talked about daylight and that you should have enough daylight inside. That's right. Two reasons. The one reason it's good for you, I'll tell you about that. And the second reason, it saves you energy if you have the daylight. That's why you need the sensor to detect how much light you really have right now and then regulate the light, dim the light or increase the light, how much you really need. And that does not just correlate um, with how much light there is right now, it should also correlate with the time of the day or perhaps uh, what kind of, what, what time of year you are in. And then I'm now coming to the bioactive part. Uh, that could also, if you can increase or decrease the light, if you can change the light environment inside your room, that could give you a bioactive version of the light. So that it could increase your vitality or it can help you soothe down to be more relaxed. And why is that only now possible. Why is that not possible 20 years ago or 30 years ago? Uh, the woman who had a talk this morning, she was talking about new innovative uh, technologies. And actually, there is one law about this new innovative technology. It's the Moore's Law. It just tells you that every like 18 months, the speed of your processors doubles. For your, sm for your smartphone, for example, they weren't as efficient as they were like 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So now it's possible to regulate all those, all those new sensors, to get all this information and work on this information in real time, which is very important that you have this in real time. And actually, the same woman there this morning talked about new technology. There's another law regarding the LED. Why were people not using LED 30 years ago? Thir LED is nothing new. Invented in 1962, the LED was introduced into the market. But the LED gets more and more efficient every year. Same law, actually. Heights law tells you that. But I wanted to talk to you about bioactive lighting, or human-centric light. So what is human-centric light? What is the sun actually doing during the day? The sun during the day is not constant. It doesn't give you constant light. It changes the light, the brightness of the light. So in the morning, it's darker than during the day. And it changes the color temperature. And we are used to that. And that's the important issue here. So if we want to get the sun inside the office or inside the school or a kindergarten or whatsoever, then we have to change the brightness in those rooms to a dynamic scene. You have to have dynamic lighting now. Um, and then you can activate the user or you can soothe the user down so that it relaxes more. But why is that? Why is the sun so important? And how does it reflect inside your body? So just to give you a uh, brief, um, brief data here, you have two different kinds of receptors that you, that you know. There are rods for the brightness, and there are cones for the color. But 10 years ago, there was another sensor found. And it's actually in the lower part of your eye. It's a melanopsin sensor. And this one is responsible for increasing and decreasing your melatonin level. So that sensor is responsible for if you're awake or if you're not awake regarding the light. And that's a very important part. So um, when you talk about bioactive light, it doesn't help you if you just have a torch in front of you and a little light coming into your eye. It needs to be from above. It needs to be a whole area. Makes sense. When you go outside, there's a whole area, and it's coming from above that's giving you the light. And if you have those, then you can even achieve that with less than a, than a thousand lux. A lot of people telling me, yes, we need so many thousand lux to increase or decrease melatonin level, because right now, I think we have like 15,000 lux outside. No, if you have those big surfaces inside your rooms, inside the building, then you can achieve biodynamic light inside rooms even below 1,000 lux. 
So and that happens then actually with your body. So the melatonin level rises when you go down from a lot of brightness to lower brightness and from a very cold color temperature to a very warm color temperature. And same thing other way around. So if you go outside during lunch, what I tell people you should do, um, then you have a lot of bright light and cold light, so you're awake. But if you are constantly under the same light, you get a little tired, but not really tired. And that's the issue here, because at night when you go home, you want to be really tired because you want to sleep well. The folks just before me told us that you sleep like 45 minutes more each night if you have a lot of daylight. That's the reason why. You need to increase and decrease your melatonin level during the day. Um, and that, that's why I have the sleeping pattern. That helps you get a better sleeping rhythm. When you're born, you don't have a sleeping rhythm. The sleeping rhythm is like two hours sleeping, two hours you're awake. My, my, my daughter is now seven months old, and she is learning now to adapt to the sleeping pattern. And the only, the only way to learn this is by light. If you go inside now and you work under 500 lux, you remove your body from the only clock that we have, which is the sun, if you work under constant light. That's why we want to integrate this, uh, the sunlight again inside the offices. So, but are there any real results? Because so many people now are talking about human-centric lighting. Yes, there are already studies out. There was one study 2012 in Hamburg in a school, and they had bioactive light. So what they did is they increased and decreased the bright brightness, and they increased and decreased the color temperature. And what happened was that the errors that those pupils in the school made was a lot less. You see that here on the chart. Um, it's a month after they worked under this bioactive light, and the errors decreased by 44%. 40 it's a standard test for pupils. So they made 40% less errors just because they worked under dynamic light. Same thing with the speed. There was another, it's the same study, actually. They had a speed test. And just working for a month under biodynamic light, they were 30% faster than they were before. So you can decrease, uh, decrease the errors that you make, you can increase the speed, and you can increase the quality of your sleeping patterns. There are some other um, projects. There was a project in the hospital in Berlin. They used the ELI, ergonomic lighting indicator should also tell you if you are working in a good environment or a bad environment. And they use the gray ones are, are uh, conventional light sources, fluorescent lights. The green one in the middle is LED, and the yellow one on the side, it should be yellow, <laughs> the yellow one on the side is LED with biodynamic light. So, oh, sorry, that's in German, so I'll quickly explain that. Um, so the vitality and the flexibility was a lot higher with those biodynamic light on the right sort, and the comfort of the light, the, the viewing comfort was also better. Another study in hospitals, and hospitals are very important because you are the full day in that hospital. When we talk about biodynamic light, it's always where you are the most time. For home, it's not that important. How many hours are you at home under lighting? Let's say two hours, perhaps? But you work eight hours in your office. There's another office study, so uh, you can see here, it was in 2000 actually, that you can decrease your stress level with those biodynamic light a lot, just by using biodynamic light. Another, uh, another study explained that you decrease your delta waves, which are also responsible. When you have high delta wave activity, then you're very tired. Um, so another study. So there are already studies for human-centric lighting that tells you and that proves to you that if you use that light inside, you have a better environment, a healthier environment. And that's what we want to create with light, a healthier environment. But how can it be implemented in an effective way? Because that was something in the past uh, where a lot of critics came and say, oh, biodynamic light is so expensive because now we need to create more light than actually we would have under the standard, like 500 lux. So let's give you a quick view on what is the most efficient way in a room. 
Let's assume we have a room, one side a lot of windows, one side you have the wall. The most efficient way would be you have a lot of sensors inside to regulate the room exactly on 500 lux. So in a luminaire, for example, you have in every luminaire, you have a light sensor. That would be the most efficient way. You have the maximum efficiency for, let's say, 500 lux. But is this the best for the human being? Because I explained to you just now that you have to have dynamic light through the whole time. So what we do, we want to focus the human being again in the middle to help him for his circadian rhythm. And that's the mix of the sustainability, the environmental impact, so being very efficient, but also the circadian rhythm. And what we do then is we help the user to have that different kind of light. This is a curve that we have in our products then, for example. There is a to be standard. It's called the Dyn 67600. Um, which is not a standard yet, but will be a uh, standard. And this is an example for an office. Wh to at which time should you have which kind of light, brightness and intensity? This would be the best inside an office for the user, not constant light. So what we do is, on the one side, we have the best light that you could have inside an office. On the other side, you have the most efficient that you can have if you have a light sensor all the time when you integrate the daylight into your calculation. And that's what we do. So we have the most efficient and the best light for the human being. And that's when human-centric lighting gets affordable again. So you can just have it in your normal, in your normal rooms or in your normal buildings. Just to have a quick overview, this is an app how you can then, uh, how you can then interface with the human-centric lighting. You can choose a city, which is also important. Everyone who sells stuff all over Europe knows that in Spain they have a lot of colder light than in Scandinavia. Makes sense, because the sun is really warmer in Scandinavia. It has something to do with the angle going through the atmosphere. But that's a different thing. So the user can decide, I want to have the light from Rome, or the user can decide, I want to have the biodynamic light from Scandinavia. Um, and this sounds like if it would be for the management level or for higher price applications. But we want to integrate that in normal luminaires. So that will be a standard luminaire, standard office, typical stuff that you see when you talk to light suppliers, LED panels. And they have it integrated now. So with a normal light panel, you can have biodynamic light. You can work better, and you can work healthier, and you can sleep better when you're at night. And this is another example for the more higher range a task light, where it's also this symbiologic technology, the biodynamic light integrated. So this is what I want to tell you. I think I have a summary, right? So. Smart lighting reduces the work for the user. That's what we want to do. We want that the user doesn't have to think about the light. The light should be there. The best light that you can have should be at the best time. The bioactive light should be in the room. That's why we have to integrate the daylight, which is very important. Um, and, oh, very long, you can, uh, can result in a higher efficiency and a healthier sleeping pattern, which is also m one of my ma main subjects. Don't just talk about the efficiency of the user. We don't want to outperform the user. We want to help him to create a better and healthier environment. Yes, and that was my presentation. I hope you had a quick overview uh, that bioactive light is important for you so we can get the sun from outside, take it inside, and then you have a better rhythm, a better circadian rhythm, and you can sleep better. Thanks.